This is everything you need to know about the first new function that I'm going to introduce you to, which is the second degree polynomial function. This function is also known as the quadratic function. It looks like this, and its rule is y is equal to ax squared. And a cannot equal to 0, because otherwise our function it will be equal to 0, and it's no longer a quadratic. And also where x is the only number that is squared. So you can also look at it as like y is equal to a brackets x squared. Your a is not squared. So here are some facts before we get into more detail. The basic quadratic function rule is just y is equal to x squared. So your a in this case is equal to 1. So you're just left with y is equal to x squared. It looks like the graph over here. The graph here is a curve that is known as a parabola. The domain of this parabola, well, if we go from left to right, we're going from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. So the domain can be known as all real numbers. The range is all positive real numbers. Why? Well, if we look from bottom to the top, we start at zero and we go all the way to positive infinity. We never go at the bottom of the graph. So we can agree that it's all positive numbers from zero, one, two, three, all the way to positive infinity. So we just write this as r plus. The y-intercept or initial value of this function, so where it crosses the y-axis, if you notice here, is simply 0. The function also crosses the x-axis only at one small point here, which is also 0. The variation of this function, well, it decreases starting here, so from negative infinity all the way to 0, and then it starts increasing from 0 to positive infinity. And finally, for the extrema, the minimum of this function is 0, and the maximum, well, it doesn't exist because it goes all the way to positive infinity. Let's talk about what a in y equals to ax squared even means. So here is this graph and its rule is y is equal to 7x squared. So in this case a is 7. Here is another graph. It is y is equal to 1.5x squared. So in this case a is equal to 1.5. Can you see a difference between these two graphs? Here I superimpose them for you. So here is the, the blue is 1.5, a is 1.5, and the red is where a is 7. So the parabola in y is equal to 7x, so the red is a lot more compressed than the parabola of y is equal to 1.5x squared. This is because the closer to 0 that a gets, the bigger the opening of the curve, or the smaller the number a, the bigger the opening of the curve. The further away from 0 that a gets, so the bigger a is, the smaller the opening of the curve. So it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect. In this case, y is equal to 1.5x squared, so the smaller the a is, the bigger the opening. The bigger a is, the smaller the opening. Here is the same graph I gave you in the previous slide, so y is equal to 1.5x squared, where a is 1.5, opening is bigger because it's close to 0. Here is y is equal to negative 1.5x squared. I'm pretty sure that you can notice the difference between these two graphs. Here again I've superimposed the two graphs. At the top, we have y is equal to 1.5x squared, and at the bottom, we have negative 1.5x squared. We can conclude that when your a is greater than 0 or positive, it opens on top of the x-axis, whereas 
when it's a negative A, it opens down. So notice that it's really like the reflection of the positive A. It reflects on the x-axis when the A becomes a negative. So I would like you to test yourself. Here are two graphs and here are two choices of functions that go with these graphs. I want you to figure out which rule goes with which graph. I encourage you to pause the video right now and see if you can guess which rule goes with which graph. So in this case, the first graph is first of all above the x-axis which tells us that A is positive but it's also very very smushed, it's very very small which tells us that our A is probably pretty big. So we can say that it's 8x squared. Whereas in the other graph, it is reflected below the x-axis, which tells us that A must be negative. And the opening is also really, really big. And if you remember, the closer to 0, the bigger the opening. So it makes sense that y is equal to negative 0.5x squared goes with the second graph. Say you're given a graph and they ask you, find the rule of this quadratic parabola. How do you do it? Well, your first step is to identify any point, hopefully an easy point, on the parabola that is not the vertex. You cannot use the point 0, 0 for this. You need to use another point on the graph. So in this case, conveniently, I have a point that is just 1, 3. So using that point, we are going to take the x and y values of that point and we are going to plug it into the rule y is equal to ax squared and we're going to solve for a since it's the only thing that we don't know right now. So we take our point and when we plug it in, we get y becomes our 3 from here is equal to a times x which is 1 squared. And please remember that the only thing that you're squaring in this function is x. If we continue simplifying, we have 3 is equal to a times 1 squared, which is just 1. And 1 times a is simply a. Therefore, 3 is equal to a. And now all we have left to do is to rewrite the rule of the function with a. And it looks like this. f of x, or y, is equal to 3x squared. What happens if you're just given the rule and they want you to graph it? Well, look at the rule. Look at A. If A is positive, you'll know that your parabola will be above the x-axis. If your A is negative, you should know that it is going to open below the x-axis. The second thing I would do is complete a table of values. So number your table of values from negative 2 to positive 2 for your x's. And then take each of those x values and put it into your rule to solve for their corresponding y values. Then you'll get several points. This will help you graph your parabola. And finally, draw. So here's an example. I give you the rule y is equal to 0.5x squared. Notice the a. Well, the a, first of all, is greater than 0, so it must open up on top of the x-axis. And it's also close to 0, so assume that it's going to be a big opening. Next, complete a table of values. So take any x-coordinate, say negative 3, and put it into the function to solve for y. So you're taking your negative 3, for example, say x is equal to negative 3, and you look at this rule, and you solve for y to get the corresponding y-coordinate. So in this case, I have 0.5 is equal to negative 3 squared. Remember, negative 3, we're going to put it in brackets because it's the only thing that we're squaring. And then once we simplify that, we get negative, oh, sorry, we get 0.5 is equal to positive 9. And if we do 0.5 times positive 9, it equals to 4.5. So if we continue doing this with a bunch of other x values, you get negative 3 is 
goes to 4.5, negative 2, 2, negative 1.5. And if you notice, the same y values are the same y values here. This is okay. We can have a bunch of the same y values. This makes it a function. And if we graph it, notice that it's above the x-axis and a really big opening because our a is close to zero. And here, all I had to do was say, okay, well, when I get to negative 2, it's at 2. When I get to positive 2, it's also at 2. And once I plug in all these points, all I have to do is carefully draw a curve. Don't worry, it's very difficult to get a perfect curve like that. I understand that it might be a little squiggly, um, but as long as it looks something like this, you should be fine. So, to conclude, I would like you to try and use the point 218 to determine both the rule of the function and the graph of the function. So remember, to find the rule of the function, you take the point, you plug it into y is equal to ax squared, and you try to solve for a. Once you solve for a, you just re-put it into the function, you'll get y is equal to something x squared. Then when you graph the function with the rule, um, try and complete a table of values and tell yourself, well, what's my a? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it big? Is it small? And then you can figure out what your problem might look like. Once you're done, check your answers on the next slide. So here are the answers using point 218. First, to find the rule, you take your 218 and you plug it into your original rule y is equal to ax squared. So in this case, we have 18 is equal to a times 2 squared, only squaring the x, which simplifies to 18 is equal to a times 4, which when we want to solve for just our a, we divide both sides by 4, and we get 4.5 is equal to a. So once we rewrite the rule, we'll get f of x or y, whatever you prefer, is equal to 4.5 x squared. Then when we want to graph it, I suggested that you do a table of values. So I chose my x coordinates as negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. This could give me a pretty good idea of where the points are on the graph so that I can properly draw a parabola. So in this case, when I plugged in negative 1, I got 4.5 as my y. When I plugged in 1, I got 4.5 as my y. And when I plugged in 2, I got 18. And my vertex is 0, 0. And when I plot it, it should look something like this. Now you know everything you need to about quadratic functions, so hopefully you'll be able to answer some of your homework questions without a problem.